This is our second video on dividing square roots. What we're going to move into right now is doing a little bit with variables. If you're going to do the square root of x of the 6 over y cubed, I think it's a good idea to use our property from the previous video, and that is separate this out so that you're just dealing with a top and a bottom separately. Now, remember from previous videos on square roots that when you are doing the square root of a variable to a power, all you need to do is divide the power by the index. Divide the power by the index. In this case, the index is 2. It's not showing right here, but it's understood when you're doing square root, the index is 2. So all we have to do is divide 2 into that number, and that becomes our power on the outside. So 2 goes into 6 three times. The is, this is an odd number. 2 goes into 3 one time with a remainder of 1. So this 1 is actually the power sitting here, and this one is the power sitting on the y. If you don't like the rule about dividing by the index, you can always write out your variables and then group them up. Since we're looking for square root, we would be looking for pairs of identical factors. There's a pair of y's, that's why one y came out, and there is a y left over. On the x's, there's a pair of x's, another pair of x's, another pair of x's, x, x, x is what gives me the x cubed. Everything got paired up, and that's why there's not a leftover. Anytime we're doing square root of a variable to an even power, it's going to come out even. If you're going to do square root of an odd power, you're always going to have a leftover because of this reason right here. There's going to be something left unpaired. Now, we're not finished with this. We have a square root in the denominator, and you know from before that you can't keep a square root in the denominator, so we need to get rid of this square root of y. And the way we get rid of that is by multiplying on the top and bottom by the square root of y. The bottom square root of y times the square root of y is just y. That y times the y that's already sitting there is going to give us a y squared on the bottom. The top is just x cubed times that radical is x cubed times that radical. This is entirely simplified. No more radical on the bottom, no simplifying, we're finished. All right, start again. We're going to separate out our square roots. Then we can look at things individually. Square root of 9 is a nice simple 3. 2 goes into 10 5 times, so that top is pretty easy. 3 over x to the fifth. Now the y to the fifth, we're going to do the same kind of division. 2 goes into 5 twice with a remainder of 1. So the number of times it went evenly becomes the power on the outside, and your remainder of 1 becomes the power on the inside. If you'd rather, group these up. Here's a pair of y's, so a y is coming out. Here's another pair of y's, so another y is coming out. y times y gives me that y squared with that leftover y. This is a fine method. It's just if you have to write out 20 different letters, then the shortcut is a better way to go. But it's always fine to write them out, especially if you just want to check. Not finished. I still have that radical y in the denominator. I need to get rid of that by doing the same thing I did a minute ago, multiply top and bottom by radical y. I'm still going to get this radical y times radical y is y. y times y squared, remember your exponent laws, this is like y to the first, y to the first times y squared actually gives me a y cubed. That's going to be my denominator. And then the numerator is just 3x to the fifth times the radical y. No more reducing, we're finished. Same process with cube root, but before I separate this out, notice that 8 and 64 can be reduced. Now that's not always going to happen, but we said earlier that if the fraction reduces out, it's usually easier to do that. So 8 goes into 64, and I'm just going to have an 8 in the top. Now I'm going to separate it out to the separate radicals. The cube root of 8 is going to be a nice neat 2. Now, the cube root of the variable, the index in this case is 3. That means I need to divide both of these powers by 3. So this is what things are going to look like. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x to the fifth, since 3 goes into 5 one time evenly, that's an x to the first on the outside. That 3 is the index. That's not x cubed. That's the cube root of x squared because I have a remainder of 2. Now, before we do the bottom, take a look. If you don't want to do the dividing, since it's cube root, we are looking for a trio. There's my trio of x's. 
one gets to come out, that's that one right there, and there are two left over, that's why there's an X squared inside. For the bottom, three goes evenly into nine, and we just get a Y cubed with nothing left over. You could go through here and group up, there's a trio of Ys, a trio of Ys, a trio of Ys is going to give me Y times Y times Y, which gives me the Y cubed. All right, this is where division of the radicals gets a little bit tricky because we're talking cube root. Still the same idea, that it's a good idea to rewrite it in a separate form, cube root of 5 over the cube root of 2. To be able to undo this cube root, we're going to have to multiply by the cube root of something. But we've got to pick the right something. The logical choice would be just the cube root of 2 because that's what we did with square root. But be careful, this doesn't work. If I do the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2, I get the cube root of 2 squared. To free up something out of the cube root, I need three identical factors. That's not enough factors to bring something out. I would still have a radical in the denominator. So that I have to think about this cube root, I need a total of three identical factors to bring out a factor. This is 2 to the first. If I could multiply by the cube root of 2 squared, 1 plus 2 gives me a total of three twos then I would be able to free this up. So this is what this really looks like. Because it's the cube root of 2, you're going to multiply by the cube root of 2 squared. And where the squared comes in is the fact that 1 plus 2 gives us that index of 3. And of course, because you multiply by the cube root of 2 squared on the bottom, you must do it on the top. So what it looks like now, bottom-wise, exponent law says 2 times 2 to the second is 2 to the third. So it's the cube root of 2 to the third. The top, all I can do is just kind of write this together. I'm going to clean this up, but all I've done is take care of cube root of something times the cube root of something is the cube root of their product. So let's clean this up. The cube root of 2 cubed is 2. That's the reason we did this, was so that we would have a total of 3 of these. Do this arithmetic up here, following your order of operations. 2 squared is 4 times 5 gives me 20. Same idea, let's get it separated. We're going to have to multiply by the cube root of 7 squared because since it's cube root, I need a total of 3 of these identical 7s. I had 1 to begin with, I needed to supply 2 more. Clean it up using your exponent law on the bottom. 7 times 7 squared gives us 7 cubed. Up is just the cube root of the product of these two. Finish the arithmetic, the cube root of 7 cubed is just the 7. That's the whole purpose in doing this, is to make that denominator a rational number. And then order of operation, 7 squared is 49, times 3 is 147. Fourth root, same idea, get it separated. Now, because it's the fourth root, it's logical that we're going to have to multiply by the fourth root of something. Think about this, this is 5 to the first. If I'm going to free up or be able to simplify the fourth root of something, I need four identical factors. I only have one of these fives. That means I need to supply three more of them because three plus one gives me the four. So that's what I'm going to multiply by is the fourth root of five cubed. Multiplying on the bottom, multiplying on the top. Finish this out as five to the first times five cubed actually gives us the fourth root of five to the fourth. And that's how we get a plain old 5 on the bottom. Arithmetic here, 5 cubed is 125 times 2 is 250.